Hello, this is Steven Nojiri and this is another Tata Genji Tradition video. This video is video two of a three-part series of Kusunokiru Shinobi. Video one discussed the history leading up to the Kusunokiru Shinobi, which was the the how, the why, and the where. We, you know, the how and the why of this tradition's ev evolution and the where we can find it in the historical records. So if you didn't see video one, you, you should watch that because it will give you the context. This video number two will discuss the types of shinobi and the overall methodology of the Kusunokiru shinobi. And again, this only applies to the mainline Kusunokiru shinobi traditions. It does not apply to Natoriru, aka Shin Kusunokiru, Hojoru, Iga, Koga, Koshu, Nagunuma, etc., etc. It doesn't apply to any other tradition. This is specifically Kusunokiru mainline shinobi. If you want to know more about those other systems, you'll need to investigate and contact persons involved with those specific traditions and areas of research. Video 3, which will be the next video in this series, will mention those traditions as part of a compare and contrast but this video is only the mainline Kusunoki teaching. So go ahead and look at your screen and what you'll see are the six shinobi from Kusunoki Ryu. Again, this is mainline Kusunoki Ryu, the four main schools of Kusunoki Ryu. When it talks about shinobi, it's talking about these six. These are the five types of spies from Sun Tzu's Art of War and the addition of the sixth type of spy. You should also know that the kanji used for these for the five spies doesn't match the Sun Tzu kanji. In other words, the kanji is either very different or there's an additional kanji added to the title, etc, etc. Each name is comprised of two kanji with the shinobi added to it. In the original Art of War, it's one kanji, so the names are a little different. But they are essentially the same thing. So the first one, Inko no Shinobi, this, we'll go into more detail about what each one of these are in a, in a further slide, but just take a moment to look at that and see what these are. These are the six types of shinobi. And what I've done is I've, there's a, the, the document has been scanned, and what I've done is I've clipped from the document so that you were what you're seeing is this is the six shinobi so as i've explained in video one the kusunoki tradition of of this guerrilla warfare or this guerrilla samurai warfare in the 1400s had to merge the concepts of sneaking in and out with their espionage so the spies were not only spies but they were also infiltrators and exfiltrators as well and it's at this time they also decided to build this system from the Sun Tzu's Art of War, whereas the previous method had been built from the Six Secret Teachings. So this is why you get five shinobi, or like I said, you get five shinobi with a sixth dako no shinobi added to the five. So you get a total of six. Now, this tracks, though, because in the original Kusunoki espionage, if, if you've seen the video, there's a video where I went through the seven-part conspiracy. If you remember, from that original seven-part conspiracy, the Kusunoki espionage had a samurai who specialized in verbal warfare, or this was is known as the samurai of convincing speech, or the samurai of reassuring speech. And this samurai or this spy, samurai spy, was a secret messenger who also specialized in talking people into or out of committing actions. This person was a master of words. And the Dako no Shinobi is essentially the same role. So it appears that Dako no Shinobi is the descendant of the samurai of convincing speech. And that it was added to the five type of Shinobi to make sure that there was a type of spy still within this teaching that was specifically a master of speech. So now look at your screen and again you'll see the six types of shinobi from the Sun Tzu model. Right. So these are the Kusunokiru shinobi. This is Kusunokiru ninjutsu. 
And in Kusunokiru, the shinobi is a noun and a verb. So the noun is not in parentheses, and in parentheses we sort of put the noun. It's both the, the person, but it's also the act of. So inko no shinobi is someone who, is the spy who works with local people. They interview local people. They recruit locals for things. But it's also the art, just in itself, the act of or the art of using locals. The nairo no shinobi is... They are enemy retainers and insiders who have switched sides and they now work with you. These are people who have betrayed their lord and now work for you. But it is also the act of or the art of getting these insiders. Hantoku no Shinobi is an enemy spy who are who you've you either brought them to your side or they don't know that you're manipulating them and you're manipulating them for your purposes. But it is also the art of using enemy spies in such ways. The act of doing that. Shicho no Shinobi is people who are put into bad situations in order to spread misinformation among the enemy. And is the act of false intel or ambush. This is a key one because a lot of people misunderstand the doomed or the dead spy of the Sun Tzu to mean a spy that you're throwing away, you're getting killed. But what it's really about, and you can see it in the title, Shicho means Shicho means the commander of death, but what it means is the commander of bad intel. And what this is, is this is a shinobi or the act of spreading false information for the purpose of disrupting the enemy. This is usually used to cause conflict. And in Kusunokiru, it's often used to create ambushes. But it is a very dangerous technique because people have to get caught. In other words, for the, for the false intel to really fall into enemy hands, usually someone has to pre let themselves get caught. Or people have to be named specifically. It's, a, it's very dangerous. So uh, on one hand, it's, the technique is a very dangerous technique. That's why it can be called like, you know, the commander of death. But at the same time, what it really is referring to is the utilization of, of fake information. Now the next one, Tensei no Shinobi. This one is pretty straightforward. This is a traditional spy who goes in, collects data, returns with the data. This is just the, this is the general act of spying. So the Tensei no Shinobi is like, Yours, when you th the generic a uh, concept of a spy, then you have the dako no shinobi. This is a master of language, a master manipulator. This person knows different dialects. This person knows how, t knows the culture and the, the, all of the different ways to sort of pretend like they're from this province or pretend for, from this province. They're really good at like, anthropology, sociology, linguistics. They are. Uh, very, very good at just blending into a situation. They're also incredible manipulators. They know how to get people to do things or to get them to not do things. They also run secret messages back and forth. So Dako no Shinobi is both the person who does this, but it's also the art of or the act of doing these things as well. So just like in the seven part conspiracy, each role in the seven part conspiracy makes the entire conspiracy work. In the Sun Tzu model, each one of these shinobi agents plays a specific role to get the conspiracy to work. And as I just said, these are nouns, but there's also the implication that they're also verbs. That is, the Southern Court or the Kusunoki shinobi isn't really a shinobi first and foremost. What they are is they're a Kusunoki tradition trained samurai who, when needed, can engage in these actions or engage in these methods, verb. While engaging in these methods, that's the verb, that samurai is a shinobi noun. Does that make sense? It's like a samurai who's trained in sword and bow. When they're using a sword, they are a fencer. When they're using a bow, they are an archer. But they are a samurai first and foremost. Thus, shinobi is a task or a function more than it is an identity. Let's give you an example. Onchi Sagon is one of the chief retainers of Kusunoki Masashige. But even he oftentimes engaged in Shicho no Shinobi plots meaning he did shicho no shinobi actions, which is the verb. When doing so, he becomes, or as a shicho no shinobi, the noun, 
He often puts his life at risk in order to spread false information that would lead, usually, to some kind of ambush of enemy forces. But other times, he might just simply be a Tensei no Shinobi, or just sort of only do basic, simple espionage, like just simply gathering data and returning. In that case, he would be a Tensei no Shinobi. So the, summer, the type of Shinobi that you could be can change based on the actions you're committing. So it's not like you're trained just to be like this one type of Shinobi. You are whatever the action you're committing is. So if you're committing, if you're spreading false information at the risk of people's lives, right, then you're Shicho no Shinobi. If you're just kind of very covertly sneaking in, you know, sort of gathering data on the enemy, you're Tensei no Shinobi. If you're delivering secret messages and manipulating people into doing stuff, then you're Dako no Shinobi. Right? The action that you commit is the shinobi that you are at the time that can change based on the situation. Now let's take a minute to look at the dako no shinobi term because it's, un it's important to understand this though. Because in the mainline kusunoki, dako no shinobi is a master manipulator, uh, spy of secret messages and etc. Cetera, et cetera. However, in the 1600s, there is a tendency for Dako or Dako no Shinobi to just be an alternate term for g generic Shinobi, right? A generic spy, right? But, or a generic infiltrator. This is because in the 1600s, there was a trend to change the five Shinobi or back to the five spies. So you had Kusunokiru six Shinobi, but then in the 1600s, people started to go, mm, let's change those five shinobi back to five spies. And that trend, you'll see, and we'll talk about this in video three, but you see this in schools like Naturiru, for example. They, they converted the five shinobi back to five spies. But when you do this, you're left with five spies and a dako no shinobi, right? So when this happens, the dako no shinobi simply becomes either shinobi or simply Dako. So whether you say Dako no Shinobi or Shinobi or simply Dako, uh, all of those basically just mean ninja at this point, at that point. So uh, this is something that the viewer needs to take note of. Dako no Shinobi, Dako, and even just Kusunokiru Shinobi, they all mean the same thing. At the, uh, in the 1600s, pretty much you're talking about the, the same thing. So in the original mainline teachings, all spies are shinobi, and Dako is a type of spy or a type of shinobi. But by the mid-1600s, some of these people, some of the students, some of the practitioners, have changed the five shinobi back to five spies. And when they're talking about Dako or shinobi, they're talking specifically about Dako no shinobi. Now let's talk about some of the key aspects of Kusunokiri espionage so that this makes sense now within a context. So, one, the primary function is to disrupt the enemy by causing discord among the generals, retainers, the labor force, etc., etc. Two, discord will either cause the enemy to become weak and then your main attack force, such as your rank and file samurai, can defeat them. Or, three, the enemy can be made to eat itself alive which basically means if you turn them on each other hard enough, they may do themselves in and you can just sit back and watch. Or four, you cause two enemy forces to destroy each other. So you take two enemies who are allied against each other, cause enough discord and problems, and then they attack each other. So essentially, the point is, the fundamental point is actually a teaching called the circle strategy or the strategy of the circle. And in summary, this involves getting the enemy retainers to betray their lord and do your bidding. This is the key point of Kusunoki espionage. Getting the retainers to turn on their side. Either turn on their side purposefully or convince them to sort of turn on their side even though they don't really know that you're manipulating them. Either way, you're, you want them to commit certain actions. You're, you are either directly, either they are knowingly betraying their lord or they are unknowingly betraying your lord their lord but that's the entire point that's the key point that's the circle strategy and almost 
all of the shinobi's work is centered around obtaining these betrayals and supporting this internal sabotage. And this also goes back to the reason why Kusanogi spies are quote unquote shinobi, blade over hard kanji, shinobi, as they move about covertly within the enemy's own ranks, uh, such as like the, the turncoats and the enemy agent or the converted spies, right? So in, in some, like some shinobi, like Tensei no Shinobi, Shicho, Inko, Dako, they're functions that support these betrayals, right? So there's a lot of covert moving in and out of the enemy's territory. So the, the, the two types of shinobi, the turncoat and the, and the turn spy, so to speak, though they are covertly moving around the enemy because they are part of the enemy's ranks. The enemy doesn't even know that they are, that they're, that they've, that they're compromised. And then again, the other ones, Tensei, Shicho, Inko, Dako, they just support those betrayals. They support that internal sabotage. So, for example, a Dako Shinobi is a secret messenger, right? We discussed this in a previous slide. So the Dako Shinobi often has to relay messages back and forth between the internal agents and the external agents. So this means that a Dako Shinobi must also know, for example, how to physically sneak in and out of a location, either by some sort of stealth, the cover of night, or by pretending to be someone else, such as entering and exiting under false pretenses or false identities. Uh, all arson can be committed, assassinations can be committed, but again, it's not random for the sake of arson or assassination. It's done to support a plan. So all fire set or assassinations are all part of supporting that internal sabotage. Now, as I have explained in previous videos, these espionage methods also have to be put together with teachings like the Great Liberation in Two Phases and the Chart of Spheres or the Chart of Circles. And these teachings further train the students to better navigate the human terrain. There are several teachings for causing social unrest and riots among commoners. Uh, several teachings, you know, to get retainers to betray, etc., etc. Uh, Kusunoku also has a special emphasis on on a samurai being able to sneak away from any situation. So the exfiltration aspect of shinobi. So in summary, the Kusunoku shinobi is a spy who can sneak in and out of a territory. In particular, spies like Tensei and Dako. They can sneak in and out of enemy territory, which is the geographic territory and the human terrain territory, in order to accomplish an attack on the enemy that focuses on extreme damage through internal sabotage. Now again, I'm about to talk about Kusunoki documents, but I must say that this is Kusunoki mainline documents. There are many documents floating around in the world that say Kusunoki do or Kusunoki this, but they're not part of the mainline tradition. They are written in the later 1600s, early 1700s, and they don't really have any connection to the actual mainline traditions. So put those aside. We're not talking about those. What we're talking about is Kusunoki do, Shinobi, Arts, the Six Shinobi, etc., etc. That's what we're talking about. So some of the genuine mainline Kusunoki documents are very scant on their Shinobi material. It's true. Not every document talks about Shinobi. Some are very scant. Some are 100% nothing but Shinobi material. So, but the document that I'm taking most of my information from is from the 15, is from 1594. It's actually a transcription. The document's older, but this transcription is from 1594. And this document is used by the mainline school, specifically circulated by the Taihekiru and the Aizu Domain Kusunokiru. However, there are, like I said, there are some shinobi documents from the Nankiru and other documents from the Aizu Domain Kusunokiru. Mostly the same documents with subtle variations. And they go into very specific details about shinobi arts, listing the techniques out one by one. And I'm not going to go on the details on these, but they're, you know, they're usually things like use a sword with Isageo to climb a wall or deal with X uh, with Y. Pretty direct and straightforward. The esoteric, but, but, the esoteric and the deep teachings for Shinobi are found in the spiritual scrolls of Kusunokiru, in the Great Liberation in Two Phases teachings, and the teachings of the circle. So that's where, like, the, the, again, so you have a whole bunch of surface level mechanical teachings, but 
the deep teachings, Kusunokiru Shinobi deep esoteric teachings as found in the liberation in two phases, the spiritual scroll, and the uh, the the strategy of the circle. Now this brings video two to an end. So a reminder, all of what I've said, it only applies to the Kusunokiru Shinobi, the mainline Kusunokiru Shinobi. It doesn't apply to all of the little schools that claim some kind of Kusunoki this or Kusunoki that, whatever. It doesn't apply to Igar Koga, it doesn't apply to Koshu, etc. Only the mainline Kusunoki schools. And so, but now in video three, which is coming up next, we will compare and contrast some with other traditions and so you can get an idea of the differences. And we'll also look at how Kusunoki ideology conflicts with Edo period politics and hiring practices. And again, if you have any questions or concerns, requests, whatever, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you.